Hi, my friends. Sometimes I get asked how you're supposed to eat fermented foods, and I've also been asked what I eat in a day. So for today's video, I thought I'd do a combo of the two questions, how I eat fermented foods with what I eat in a day. I'm gonna start with my breakfast meal and take you through my dinner. So I'll see you in the morning. So what I do is my morning routine in the summer when the garden is fresh and going is I make a trip out to the garden and I pick some fresh greens. I've got some Swiss chard and some kale here. Um, my chioga beet, so I'll chop these greens off as well. And then one of these sweet banana peppers, not spicy. So I'll chop these up and saute them. And excuse me, I've just, I've got morning voice. So this is my oatmeal that I soaked overnight with my fermented hemp milk. And if you haven't seen that video, check it out. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add some fresh strawberries that I picked last night and then some bee pollen from a local apiary. And also I like to add a capsule of royal jelly, which is from the same local apiary. And then I just like to um, grate the beet. It makes it saute quickly and it's really, it's really delicious, I think. I'm just gonna chop these up. Okay, I'm gonna head over to the stove and saute this up. You just love how deep red those are. You just can't get that from a store-bought strawberry. And then this is the uh, royal jelly. Oops. This is the royal jelly. I'm going to go out to my deck and enjoy this delicious bowl of goodness as soon as my veggies are done sauteing. Okay, so how I get my fermented food in the morning with my breakfast here. This is my green cabbage sauerkraut that I make with the ginger and the carrot and the fennel seed. And what I do is I just take a clean fork and dip it in there and pull out a huge bite like this. There are billions to trillions of probiotics in just this one huge bite plus live enzymes and other good nutrient stuff to get the digestive juices flowing. And as you may know, ginger is really good for digestion. So, bottoms up. For my afternoon meal, I will make a huge garden salad and incorporate lots of yummy ferments. I'll start off with about two forkfuls of this red cabbage sauerkraut with beet, pear, and fennel. Next, some fermented kale. One heaping forkful of that. Okay, so this is a fermented carrot salad that I made that's different than the one I've got a video on. Real quick here, I'll just show you what I've got going on in it. This isn't a formal recipe, so I don't have any measurements or a video for it. I just kind of made it up by tossing some things in there that I thought would go well together. It's shredded carrot, radish, garlic slices, fresh thyme leaves, and some chopped chives. Add salt, of course, for the fermentation. I mixed it together, packed it in a jar, and let it ferment for one to two days, and voila! Next up, fermented zucchini relish. You may know this one since it was a pretty recent video. So good over a salad. Two heaping tablespoons of that. 
So these are some of my homemade pickles that I chopped up. Not fermented, they were pickled in vinegar, but I love vinegar pickles. So on the salad they go. However, I do have some non-vinegar pickles fermenting right now on the countertop. They'll be ready in just a few more days. My delicious fermented pickles recipe video will be coming out soon, and when it's ready, you'll find it in the link description. Okay, back to that salad I was making. Fresh bell pepper from my garden, which everything in this salad today is from my garden. Then some fresh peas, sliced cherry tomatoes, fresh chopped dill, dill flowers for lovely color. I just love making things pretty, can't help it. Now for a dressing. I don't use store-bought and sometimes I make my own, but lately this is what I've been doing most of the time. Brines as dressing. Either some homemade pickle juice brine over top, which don't judge, it's really good when it's your own homemade seasoned pickle brine. This kale's got some nice brine excess that I can steal, especially since it's near the end of the jar. I've been making my fermented zucchini relish with extra salt water brine, specifically for the sake of brine robbing for salads. Which, by the way, the brine has lots of probiotics in it. So much so, you can even use it in a starter for other ferments. So utilize the brine, don't toss it. Okay, I'm trying to be civilized here for the sake of this video by using a spoon, but Ah, to heck with it. This is what I really do. I pour it over the salad like so. And I also make it with extra saltwater brine for the sake of using it as salad dressing. I didn't actually add any salsa onto this salad. I'm just stealing the brine. You'll see where I'm gonna use this fermented salsa later. Since the jar is more empty, it's just easier to pour out the fermented juice. Here we go. A ginormous garden salad with how I incorporate my fermented foods into it. Now let me add a note here. These aren't the only things I eat all day. Usually with this salad I'll also have a couple large pieces of fruit, whatever's in season. Another question I get asked is, am I vegan? I'm not a vegan, however, I respect vegans. I also respect people who eat animal products. I just respect people, period. My channel is for everyone. Besides, anyone can eat fermented foods. We're in this together, right? Also, I wanna squeeze this in real quick. This is another fresh garden salad from a different night and I added corn silk to this salad. This is corn silk and it's loaded with nutrition and health benefits. For dinner, I'm going to saute these garden veggies and make a big gluten-free pasta dish that will have the trifecta combination of cooked vegetables, fresh raw garden veggies, and unheated fermented foods incorporated as well. This is one of my favorite meals. And in case you were wondering, I'm also not exclusively gluten-free. I enjoy a variety of foods, some with wheat flour, I make an awesome one hour homemade bread, and some without wheat flour, like red lentil penne pasta that's for dinner tonight. I just like food, what can I say? Shazam, a fresh yellow bell pepper, fresh garden peas, then this is the creme de la creme, a fermented salsa on top with the added juice as the most delicious flavoring to this pasta dish. Topped with some Kalamata olives and voila, this pasta is ready for the eating. By the way, last week I did a garden tour video, so if you want to see where my veggies are coming from, when I say garden fresh, check out that video too. Link in the description. In addition, I had a side of grilled salmon, but nothing fermented atop of that. So recapping the fermented foods throughout the day were seven different recipes and 25 different ingredients within those recipes. So why is diversity in fermented foods important? If you watch my video on the 12 probiotics and sauerkraut, I go into detail about how each vegetable and fruit has its own unique probiotic profile and why. 
So by eating a diverse array of fermented ingredients brings that needed diversity into your body. If you haven't watched that video, it's a must see, especially if you're getting into fermentation. So you can check it out right here. Then for all the fermented recipes you saw in this video, you can find them in my fermentation playlist on my channel right here. Links for all these videos are also provided in the description. Subscribe to be a part of my channel, Clean Food Living, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye.